Hello everyone, on uh, this week's video for re-entry, we're going to be taking a look at the Apollo Service Propulsion Tutorial. Now this one I'm a little unknown on, so I have a feeling there's going to be a couple elements to this that I'm not going to be able to uh, kind of meddle my way through, but you never know, it might actually work okay. Now, my understanding is the service propulsion system is basically the giant rocket on the back of the command module. I imagine that that's used for a bunch of different things. Obviously, it's going to be for re-entering back into Earth orbit. Of course, you're going to be using it for any you know, sort of last-minute maneuvers. And if I recall correctly, the system itself is designed that it can be restarted a multiple number of times. But uh, we'll see just how good my memory is in a second. Yay for loading times. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. SPS. Uh, today, we'll be learning about the SPS. Yep. You're currently in stable orbit around Earth. I don't believe... Oh, yes, we are. <laughs> Still above the S4B, okay. We will need to detach from the S4B, then look at the system's need to control the SPS. This will go through the basic operations. I recommend checking the flight manual for details. To separate the S4B, first we'll need to go ahead and press the SISM move SEP push button on MBC1. This is a cover button, so you need to open the cover first. That'll do it. I was expecting a thunk. Honestly, I was really, really expecting a thunk there, but I guess, I guess you can't have everything. All right, you should now be separated, which we are. Go to the external view, and you should see I'm just orbiting in front. Uh, what's a little weird here is I'm not slowly moving away from it like I would expect, but that's all right. All right, usually there's more steps needed to safely do this, but for today, that's fine. Cool. Go back into the cockpit, okay? It has a helium pressurization system, a propellant feed system, propellant gauging and utilization, and a rocket engine. Nice. The restartable, yeah, there I was right, has a nominal thrust of 2,500 pounds. Not bad. And it's gimbaled. Okay, that's good news. That means we can steer it. The oxidizer in the fuel of the SPS is used to ignite and generate thrust, okay? The total propellant supply is contained within four tanks, an oxidizer tank, an oxidizer sump tank, makes sense, fuel storage tank, and a fuel sump tank. It is pressurized with helium at 175 PSI to push the substances into the thrust chamber, so it's a pressure-based system, okay? The helium valves can be controlled by the SPS uh, valve AB switches on the MDC-3. Let's go float over here. Uh, set it to the missile position. Click, all right. The SPS HE VLV talkback indicators, which are these guys, should say if they're open or closed. Okay, so let's go ahead and flip it. And notice the valve is opened. Oh, maybe I pushed it in the wrong direction. There we go. Newbie mistake. Set it back to auto. Nice. We'll confirm on. Okay, nice. Makes sense. Okay, so far so good. Above these controls, you'll find the pug system, and just below the SPS quantity label. Okay, sounds good. Uh, let's see, the pugs da, 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 is used to monitor the propellant. The SPS is a normal ratio of 1 to 1.6. Okay. When both the fuel and the oxidized levels are the same, the system is balanced. I think that's what we have up here. Uh, the oxygumbulnate uh, shows the balance of the system. If it reads zero, the system is balanced. This is right above this. Okay, that's going to be this one right here. Interesting. If it is unbalanced, the gauge will indicate a value either ink or dec. Uh, propellant utilization valves can be used to correct any unbalancing. It will change the mixture ratio of the balance. Interesting, so we can change the thrust dynamically. Again, the SPS system is restartable and is the primary source of thrust. It's all we got. There are two pairs of engine injector valves named the bipropellant A and B. The engine is ignited by opening one or two of these because it's, as you know, it's hypergolic propellants. Alrighty, when open, the engine will throttle at max thrust for the duration of the burn. Oh, it's one of those. Okay. Each system ignition requires nitrogen from the system. At the launch pad, it is filled to 2,500 PSI absolute, okay? This is going to be needed at least 400 for the system to use. In addition, each ignition will get you 50 PSI of nitrogen. Okay, that's a problem. The SPS instrumentation gauges on the upper part of the MDC-3 lets you see the status of the SPS system. All right, go float up here and take a look real quick. Uh, the HEN2 line can be selected using the SPS press in switch. Uh, it can show temperature, helium, nitrogen levels, fuel oxidizer. Set this to NTB, which is going to be our down position. So that should affect these instrumentations, which it does. Most of the controls to ignite the SPS are located on MDC1. Interesting. Either or both of the systems are needed to arm to ignite the system. The protected DV thrust AB switch is on the MDC1 is used to arm the control logic for the onion injector valves AB. Okie doke. Let's arm the system now. Ooh, it's covered. You know that means it's important. All right, here, click. All right, the LVPC shows the chamber pressure if it's indicated usually within 100. Okay, sounds good. The SPS propellant is less than 50%. The fuel might be floating around in the tank due to free fall gravity. Therefore, before igniting the ignition, the propellant needs to be settled down in the tanks. This is done by using the direct Eulish button on MDC1 or using the forward translation thrusters. Oh, we won't need to do this. Ah, see, that makes sense. The engine is ignited in three different ways after being armed and ready. 
The primary method is to use the computer in the D CMC DV mode using program 30 and program 40. Makes sense. The secondary method is to use it in DV mode. I believe that's what this stuff up here is for. Uh, the uh, SC content needs to be, oh my gosh, this is going to get complicated. The EMS needs to be in the DV mode for the EMS DV range set to a number of feet per second. When this is set, the thrust on button is pushed ignited. Oh, very scientific. The third method is to use direct on mode. Oh, cool. We can fly this thing like a rocket ship. That sounds like, well, that's what it is, right? It is considered the backup mode. The SPS thrust switch is struck to debt on to ignite the engine in normal to shut it down. The EMS can optionally be used to detect DV changes. Oh, let's try it. He it just turns it on. <laughs> that is so unscientific. I love that. All right, now that concludes our SPS system. Well, I guess we're uh, not so close to what we started at now because we just kind of flew away from it, just sort of blasted it with our eat our space dust. All right, uh, that was interesting. Uh, definitely can see using the computer to do all the work here. I can just imagine trying to do this by hand would be a absolute nightmare. But you know, some people can do that stuff pretty quick. Enjoy.